Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we've got another access learning lesson for you. And this one we're going to put pictures onto our forms. So we're going to put images on the form. So in the Bargain Barn uh, lesson that we've been doing, the learning course, we've got some stock items forms of things that are for sale in the barn. And we're going to make them have pictures on them, just like a real uh, website would, a website thing like eBay or a shopping site, they always have a picture of the item because the picture's worth a hundred words anyway. So it's going to be hats off and glasses off and get those other glasses on and let's get into it. All right, so as we said, the idea is to have, you know, a picture of the product uh, for each item on the stock items form and to get that to show. Now, a thing about databases is you don't store the pictures in the database. Uh, they need to be linked to because they take up way too much space in the database. So we kind of link them in. So in this training lesson, the way you do that is uh, as follows down here. These are the three main steps. Now, what's this thing doing to me here? I want that to go away. All right, so the three main steps are, we're gonna to have to make some room to put the picture in. So we're gonna to have to unlink some form groupings that are on our forms. And you don't have to use our start database. You could be having your own form that you just wanna put some images on and follow along with this tutorial and do that. Uh, we also need to have our images in a folder on our computer and we're going to reference that folder to do the linking and the way we do an image on a form is using a picture box in access. Okay, so uh, in this training database, it's probably easiest just to get our start database and get the reference guide as well in the downloadable resources. And also you can even get all of the pictures there also. And there's a link to that lesson on our website that has the downloadable resources uh, in the YouTube description of this video, or there will be one coming up soon if it's not there already. Uh, now, what our students often do is they wanna have their own images and their own products. So that's fine if you wanna to go to Google Images, get some images, save them as JPEGs, put them all in a folder, change the names of items that are for sale in the bargain barn to be your images. That's okay. In fact, we recommend you do that because it'll look nicer to you if it's got things that you like in it. Now, there's a little bit more to the story than just those three steps. There's actually eight steps we're going to be going through. So this could be a rather long video, but we'll try and make it as clear and crisp uh, as we can. All right, so there are the steps there. Okay, we're going to be using uh, some different form view modes here. We're going to be doing work in design view. So to get into those different modes, you can either go in the top left hand corner as shown at the bottom here and go form view, layout view and design view. So we'll be using all three views for this lesson or down the bottom right hand corner, the very bottom right hand corner of the screen, which you can't see because that's where I'm sitting up. Uh, there are some icons as well. The one in the furthest away in the very bottom right hand corner is design view. The middle one's layout view. And the first one in that group is if you want to get into form view. Okay, so we need to open up our stock items form and get started. So let's get across into Microsoft Access and do that. Okay, so here we've got our stock items form and we need to uh, create some room on that to make a picture. Okay, now one thing we can do is go up the top left hand corner here and go into layout view. And in layout view, because these fields all join to each other, if we shorten this one, it'll kind of shorten all of them. So you can actually grab fields and shorten them a little bit here. And we can also go to the edge of the form. Let's just close down that property sheet because we don't need that yet. And we can pull that across. And you can see in here, we've got plenty of room to um, put our picture. So let's save that form and close it. And if we reopen it again, it should remember that size. Now, if your field isn't remembering that size and like access is squashed it up small, 
That's because you'll need to go into layout view if you're using your own forms and not our start database. And you need to go on the design tab there and in the property sheet. And on the format tab, you need to uh, click here first in the first drop down list and make sure you're on the actual form. So somewhere down in here, there will be one that does the whole form, this one here, form. Make sure on the form, and there's three things that all need to be set to know. So you need to make sure auto center is set to know, auto resize is set to know, and fit to screen are all set to know, okay? So if you do that for your form, and then you save your form, what should happen is that if you've happened to resize at any particular size and saved it, when you reopen it, it should remember that size and keep it the same size. So if you're using your own forms, you may need to do that. Okay, now the next thing is the actual images. So we've got a folder here on our PC hard drive where we've got the images for the Bargain Barn stock items table that we have. So we've got camera lens, garden, elephants, green tent. Now these, for their full name, would this would be green tent dot jpg kettle dot jpg they're all jpg images notice we've also named them here so they've got no spaces so on this lady's bike uh let's see if we just click in there if this had a space uh it's best not to have spaces in the name so if yours do have spaces just sort of click in there twice and take away any of those spaces that are in there Okay, so that needs to be set up. You download uh, the images from our resource uh, page uh, and you can get each of those and then just put them all in the one folder. We'll be coming back to that folder soon, but let's go in access here to our stock items table. Okay, in the stock items table, we've already set up an image location field previously, but if you're doing this not using our um, files, just in design view, you would add a new field called image location. And well, let's just do that. So it'd be picture location. And that would be a short text field. And it needs to be like the full 255 long here for the length. Okay, after you've made that, you can click in the gray box here and you could move it to a certain location as well. Uh, but we're just going to sort of uh, close our table here and not save the changes and open it up again. So we've got image location. Now we need to stretch that out to be fairly long. So if you go up the top here on the division line between the two columns with your finger off the mouse button, you'll get the two way double arrows. Once you've got them, push down the mouse button and you can stretch that. So we want to stretch that right out to have plenty of room. Now, to specify the image location to make the link, we need to go back to our folder. And on our folder here, it's got the path to the image. If you click in that box at the end there, it's going to give us the backslash path, which is the one that we need. So all we did there, just doing it again, we went to the end of images with our mouse and we clicked in that and that gives us the path name. So we need to highlight all of that path name by pushing down the mouse button and going left and then control and C on our computer to copy it. So we're copying that control and C. Now we go back to our table where image location is and we need to control and V, the letter V, to paste it. Uh, not control P because that's for printing. Now on here we're going to need another backslash character straight after images so we might as well put that in now. And so backslash, ugh, backslash is usually located uh, just above the enter key on most keyboards or underneath your backspace key, you'll have a backslash key. Now that's what we need to copy because that's going to be the same path for every image. So let's just go control C on that. And we're just going to control V that into every single row on here, which might take a while. And then we can get all of our image names from that folder and we can type them into here. Okay, so just control V, control V. And one more time there, control V. Okay, now our first image is that lens. So if we go back to the folder here and have a look, uh, let's just move that guy. Uh, the name of the lens is camera lens with a big C and a big L. So in here we have to type camera, 
camera lens, no spaces with a big C and a big L. And that's a JPEG file, so you actually have to put the .jpg on the end. That's important. Okay, let's do one more here. The garden elephants, if we go to our folder and have a look at that. The garden elephants, garden and then elephants, big G, big E and .jpg on the end. So we type that one in. Now you're gonna be very bored watching us type all of these in, so probably best if we just pause the recording now and we'll add all of those in. So all we're doing is having a look in our folder, seeing what the name of it is. Now, if you're really smart actually, uh, what's our next one? The Morven Star Ladies Bike. See here, if you click in there twice to rename it, you can actually, I think, control C that name from there and control V the name in here and put .jpg on the end. So that might save you some time actually, control C, control V in the name. Anyway, we'll just pause the recording here and we'll go ahead and we'll put all of those names in. Okay, so welcome back. And what we've done is we've uh, been through our folder and we've got all of those names typed in. So that takes a little while. And we can now go to the top left hand corner and we'll save that table. Okay, so we've got all the images locations in there and we can close that. All right, so that's going to be uh, the images that we link to. All right, so let's open up our stock items form. So open the stock items form and we're going to go into uh, layout view. So up the top left hand corner view layout view. And now to add a picture on this a little uh, icon here that's got image. It's a picture of the mountains uh, with a little computer screen. So you click on that. Now that doesn't actually put anything onto your form. That just activates the tool. And so we go to our form where we'd like the image here. And you can see on the form, it's put a little plus sign and we kind of draw like a rectangle that that was going to go into. And it doesn't actually do anything on the form. What it does is it opens up a navigator here. And with the navigator, we can go to where our images are located. So we just had them in this folder called images. So go inside that folder. And this first item here was the phone. So we need to get the phone picture. So we just pick the phone picture and we say, okay. And that's put the picture in, but oh my goodness, the picture's in a tiny little box here cramped up. Uh, these boxes have little dots around them. They're part of the table layout that's been made when we created the form. So these little uh, other boxes, can we just click them and get rid of them? Uh, okay, we'll try that. Uh, I'm trying to delete those boxes, but they will not go away, okay? They're permanently there with the form. Now, the way we need to make them go away is we have to go into design view. So our next step is in the top left-hand corner here, we're going into design view. Now, in design view, uh, we can click on those and see them and we can click on everything else in the form. Now up the very top left hand corner, it's very hard to see, but next to the item ID code box, there's a little kind of plus sign navigator symbol. Now you need to click on that navigator symbol. When you click on that symbol in the very top left hand corner, uh, just to the left of the item ID code, it will highlight every single field in the form. And they're all joined up in this big table group. And that's what the little um, plus signs there. That's the thing that joins them all together. So up the top of our screen, we change to arrange and then you go to remove layout. And that's gonna disconnect all of these boxes. Okay, so, but you have to be in design view to do this. You cannot be in layout view. It must be design view. Now we remove layout and what should happen now is See how all those other little um, dotted boxes disappeared and all these other boxes are now independent of each other. So this one we can, uh, well, we, uh, let's see, I'll grab onto that. I can move that on its own, all right? So everything's disconnected. Let's just go Control Z on that, Control and Z to put it back. Okay, now we can change over. If we go to the Home tab up the top to get off the Arrange, and go in the left hand side to view, we'll change back into layout view. And now we don't have all those little dotted boxes. And what we should be able to do is 
expand the size of our phone here. So this box that the phone's in, we can expand that, we can get in the middle of it and push down our mouse and we can move it round to where we need it. Now, you'll kind of notice that uh, the phone isn't quite fitting into that box. Okay, it is now because we moved it a few times. All right, now the only problem is we've got that displaying all nicely there or near enough. Uh, as you go to the bottom left-hand corner of the form and navigate through everything that's in there, uh, this one is supposed to be, what's this one? This is the camera lens, but it's a phone. What's going on? And uh, this next one here is supposed to be the two matching garden elephants. That don't look like elephants to me. That's a phone. And as we go through these records, this lady's mountain bike is a phone. Everything is a phone. Okay. So our next step is that we have to link this picture box we've made back to, remember back in our table in our stock items table, we'll just open that up. Remember how we made all these image locations here? So we've got all the image locations. We have to link all those image locations that are part of the image location field uh, in that table. They've got to be linked in to this picture box and that's what we need to do next. Okay, how we do the linking is we need to go on our form here into design view, okay? And in design view, we need to bring up the property sheet by clicking on the property sheet. Then we need to make sure we clicked onto the phone. So it's got an orange box around it. So the phone is selected. Now on the property sheet, there's a whole lot of formatting ones here in the format tab. We need to go to the data tab. And on the data tab, there's only one item, which is the control source. And click the down arrow here. Next to there, there are triple dots. If you accidentally click on that, it's going to open up this expression builder and we don't want to use that. So just close that down. We can just use this drop down arrow. Now in the drop down arrow, it's going to tell you for the uh, table that's linked to this form, which is the stock items table. See, there are all the fields in the stock items table and we made that one called image location. So that's the one we pick. We want to link that picture box so that it gets its location from the image location field and then it can navigate down into that folder and fingers crossed, it'll get the correct image for each item. All right, so if we now go up the top left hand corner and change back to form view and down the bottom left hand corner of the actual form, if we start navigating through, hey, this is looking good. We've got images for all of our different items. Okay, now some of the images look a little bit small here. So let's just go for, with the view icon in the left hand corner to layout view, close that. Oh no, we'll leave that property sheet open actually. And you can see what's happening is uh, things aren't quite filling up the picture box. So we need to check what kind of mode the picture box is in. So while we're clicked on it with the property sheet open here, if we go to format, you can see there's one here called size mode, which is sort of one, two, three, four, five down. So when you clicked on that picture box, you've got a size mode. Now the size mode is zoom, which isn't bad. It zooms up the picture to fit in the box. Uh, maybe if we try stretch and see what that does, that'll stretch the picture out to fit the box. So if we navigate through, uh, they all kind of fit in the same size box, but you can see some of them go a little bit blurry. Uh, like those elephants are slightly blurry and the phone looks really wide. So perhaps instead we'll just use zoom mode. And even though here you can see the picture box, okay, let's just close the property sheet. If we go back to form view and flick through, uh, they're looking okay. All right. So we can see a picture of our item uh, and that's all good. So a picture's worth a thousand words. So it's really nice to see pictures of the items in there. And that's happening on the form. So that was basically it. We needed to get images onto our form. And we've done that by following all of the steps. Okay, so back in the guide here, we've done a lot of things. So you can see the guide's really good. It tells you uh, step by step what to do and spells it out. So it's worth getting. And look, the guide only costs less than $2 US. All right, we do charge for it. 
but it's less than $2 US. So look, have a go at buying the resources in the guide for this lesson. If you don't like it or it doesn't work for you, um, that's fine. Like you've only uh, done an investment of uh, less than $2 US. And if you're a teacher or a trainer or someone in a university and you want a ready-made lesson for your classes on how to put images onto forms in Microsoft Access, well then just pay $5.30 Australian, which is less than um, $5 US, and you can get a license then that enables you to use this uh, lesson for up to 30 students. So look, it's worth investigating, uh, but anyway, that's that for that thing. The videos, maybe they're not as professional as I'd like them to be. Uh, the lights doing really weird things to my skin and things like that. And maybe I'm not talking properly, but I'm doing the best I can and hopefully the videos will get better. But look, the uh, actual guide is a really good quality item and at a great price. Anyway, enough of the sales pitch. So just to recap, they're the three main things you need to do when you add a picture box in. So we've got a little assignment here for you. Uh, with our start database, there's another form there, the sold items form. And it'd be good to have pictures on that form as well. Now, the table with the image location is already set up, okay? So you don't have to do that step of putting all the images locations into the stock items table. That was already done. So with this one, you're just going ahead to the design view and arranging and removing the layout so everything's not glued together, uh, making the form a bit bigger to make some room putting your picture box in, just putting the telephone or any old picture in first, and then you go into the data sheet and link the control source uh, to the image location in the table. Then it's gonna do kind of like hyperlinking and just grab the image in as it's needed so the image isn't actually taking up any space in your database. Just make sure that folder where the images are, you don't move that around at any time to a different location because that's gonna mess up um, all of the hyperlinks. So anyway, there's a little practice assignment to do. You can go through the same steps uh, that we just did and hopefully that's gonna work out and look something like this when you're finished. So we'll have the sold items form, we'll also have images on it. Save the form and the database. All right, so we'll just be doing that by going across back to Microsoft Access. So let's save that form and close it down. That one was all working. So to save the database, top left hand corner, go to the file tab and then it takes you here and you need to go to save as, and we just wanna save it as an access database here, access database and click on save as. And there we just find somewhere to save it. So let's just go to where we're doing our Microsoft access work. And this is our form images done. So let's save that. Make sure the type here is Microsoft Access Database, but I think that's the only type you can select anyway. Now, after you've saved something, you often get this yellow line, or if you've downloaded our Start Database and loaded up for the first time, just make sure you click that Enable Content and then your database is there and ready to go. So. Where to next in our course? So if you have been following along with our Microsoft Access course, these are all the things we've done so far. We've had so much fun already. Uh, we've made the database and the tables, the foundation of the database, and we then created queries to extract subsets of information from the database, and they were really useful for when we made our screen forms. Uh, we've added nice pick and click drop down lists onto our screen form to uh, help with the data entry and minimize sort of mistakes that could happen. And now we've added stock item images onto our form so it looks a lot nicer because we can actually see a picture of each uh, stock item. Our next step in the next lesson will be creating data input validation onto fields so that things like selling prices can't be entered as zero because that means you're giving it away for free um, or ridiculously large values like two million dollars or something like that. So we can set in limits with validation so that accidents don't happen on our database. Uh, okay, so hope you've enjoyed this lesson and it's helped you out a lot. Now you can get nice looking images on your form and we'll see you in the next Microsoft Access lesson.